At the outbreak of the Korean War in the summer of 1950, Ronald Rosser was working in the coal mines near his home in southeastern Ohio. The oldest of 17 siblings, Rosser had joined the Army four years earlier and was followed into the service by his brother, Richard. After serving three years as a mortarman in peacetime, Ronald decided to leave the Army when his enlistment was up. Richard remained in the Army, and following North Korea's invasion of the South on June 25, 1950, Richard was ordered to report to Korea immediately. Wounded at the Battle of Taizhan shortly after his arrival, Richard was pressed back into battle as the short-handed Allied forces attempted to stall the North's momentum. On February 10, 1951, he was killed during an assault trying to relieve cut-off American troops. Devastated by the loss and determined to finish his brother's tour, Ronald re-enlisted in the Army, requesting combat duty in Korea. A forward observer, Rosser proved especially adept at his job. He was offered a battlefield commission, but turned it down. He wanted to remain on the front, fighting to protect his fellow soldiers and to finish the tour his brother had started. On January 12, 1952, Corporal Rosser's company was ordered to take a hill well fortified by Chinese troops in the snow-covered mountains of Korea. Badly outnumbered and faced with withering fire, the Americans pressed forward with their assault. By the time they were within striking distance of the enemy, only 35 of the company's 170 men were able to fight. All of the officers and sergeants were down, and the company commander had been seriously wounded. Pinned down by machine gun fire at point-blank range, Rosser desperately called in mortar fire on the enemy position, but they were protected by a fortified bunker. He grabbed the radio and called the regimental commander, notifying him that very few men were left to fight and that they were running low on ammunition. The colonel wanted to speak to an officer, so Rosser dragged the radio to his wounded commander, whose face was covered with his own frozen blood in the sub-zero temperatures. As the downed officer received his orders, his hopeless expression told Rosser all he needed to know. The remaining men were to reorganize and make one final charge. I'll take them up for you, Captain, Rosser said to his commander. You know you're not going to make it, don't you? The commander replied. We'll try, is all Rosser could respond. Rallying the remaining soldiers, Rosser told them to follow his lead. He jumped up firing, never looking back as he covered the 40 yards to the enemy's dug-in position. As Rosser stopped to change magazines just before the enemy trenches, he turned to find that he was alone. Many fellow soldiers were laying scattered, cut to pieces by machine gun and mortar fire, while others were caught trying to break through to him. It was just he and the enemy. For a split second, the thought of his fallen brother crossed his mind. Rosser let out a whoop and leaped into the enemy trench, eliminating the soldiers manning it. He then cleared the machine gun bunker with his single white phosphorus grenade. Jumping back into the trench, Rosser found himself face to face with a large group of Chinese soldiers. Both sides fired at each other, and while the enemy began to fall, miraculously, Rosser was not hit. After killing several more enemy fighters and running out of ammunition, Rosser withdrew, carrying a wounded comrade down the mountain. Gathering ammunition from the dead and wounded, Rosser returned to the fight, eliminating two more bunkers. After a third attack, having been hit twice and seeing that the enemy was reinforcing their position, Rosser returned to his unit and helped lead their withdrawal down the mountain. As the wounded gathered at the field hospital, Rosser's commander asked what had happened on the top of the mountain. Upon hearing the story, he asked, Do you know they're going to put you in for the Medal of Honor? Rosser shrugged off the idea. He had just done his job and accomplished the only personal goal he had, avenging his brother. On June 27, 1952, President Truman presented Ronald Rosser with the U.S. military's highest award, the Medal of Honor. Rosser would remain in the Army, and after losing another brother in Vietnam, he again requested assignment to a combat zone. This time, the Army refused his request, and he shortly thereafter retired.